calls. We've got about 25 minutes left. And, uh, and hopefully when we switch times, the calls that come in later in the show will actually be earlier in the show, and maybe we'll, we'll see more of that. we got Bill. How you yeah. doing? Hi. Hi. How, how are you? Okay, uh, Matt and Russell. It's good to hear from you. Uh, I, re I have this cat. I'm a golfer, and of course, the Atheist is really and I was at the VA in Temple mm -hmm. for cataract surgery, and the uh, ophthalmologist said, saw my cap, and he said, I'm a strong Christian. And I said, where's your evidence of a God? And he says, the eye. Well, functions that the creator, it could not evolve. And what's your opinion on that, about the eye? Um, he should look at the actual record of animals that are alive today, which exhibit various different forms of the eye with and without those features. I mean, you know, all that's required for evolution is that there be a small stepwise path that exists from point A to point B, and that each step in that path winds up being slightly beneficial over the previous one. Uh, and in the case of eyes, you know, there, there are a lot of living current animals that have various types of eyes, some that don't have lenses as good as ours, uh, some that are just basically um, light-sensitive spots. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of good videos, actually, that have been produced, some by Dawkins and others, um, that talk about specifically the evolution of the eye. Now, I wouldn't go so far, uh, we don't want to get overly technical because neither Russell or I are, are experts on right. evolution or any of these other things, but you know, we have read about this, so we're not clueless. Um, we, we can't say, this is how the human eye definitely formed. But what we can do is demonstrate not only this wide diversity of eyes that exist in nature now, but we can test and demonstrate a process that leads from a single photosensitive cell um, and then the advantage of having multiple photosensitive cells, and then the advantage of having a concave set of photosensitive cells so that now you can tell a better direction yeah. of light, and that as this, as this eye uh, cup um, gets more and more pronounced, that there then becomes an advantage of being able to adjust it, and if a lens forms over it, which can happen, in, and, and I, well, I better not use cataracts as an example of that anyway, but that all of a sudden now you have the ability to focus and fine tune what you're looking at. And this gradual progression um, is, it, it, it moves towards um, the type of eye we have now. But evolution doesn't have any kind of goal in mind. Um, there's no, uh, this is better. What there is is uh, natural selection, which makes which acts on changes to say, uh, this mutation is not beneficial. Uh, it, you're, this is not going to be passed along. It's going to be you know, prevented from, or hopefully prevented from, from being passed along. And these other mutations actually benefit the species, making it more likely for them to reproduce. The problem that we have, the problem that most people have with, when, they, when they look at evolution is it's very difficult to grasp the concepts of the vast times involved in, in these processes, we're talking about millions of years, um, and you know we can o we we've only been able within our individual lives to observe directly 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. Um, then, when you take a look at the amount of time that science has been investigating this, you're talking about a couple of centuries. And when you're talking, when in, and even if you expand that to the bulk of human history of of what we can learn and know about, you're talking about thousands of years. And that is still just the teeniest little chunk of the millions of years process um, that led to this. It's really hard to grasp how tiny changes over that much time can lead to something. Uh, and people will say things like, well, we don't see evolution right now. Yeah, we do, all the time. And speciation is observed. Um, with regard to what your, your optometrist was saying about there being 12 functions um, that, ha that require a, a creator, uh, I don't buy it for a second. It sounds a lot like irreducible complexity as a claim, um, and that is fundamentally flawed from a logical point of view. It is an argument from ignorance or personal incredulity that says, I can't see how this sort of l level of complexity could have arisen, arisen through natural processes. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and say that a god did it. And that's just not a justified conclusion.
Is that it? Oh, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Appreciate the call. Thank you for calling. Take care.